It's Five Bullet Friday, and I have a wonderful, wonderful episode for you today. Number five, by the way, will stare people up the wrong way. I know people won't like it, but it's something that is true. And um, sometimes truth hurts. Right. <laughs> so there, <laughs> number one. Right, Five Bullet Friday. Number one, everyone makes mistakes. That's why they put rubbers on the end of pencils. Oh, that is brilliant. Sometimes you beat yourself up about making a mistake, but everybody makes mistakes. But the, the problem is we don't want to make the same mistake again. Yes, you get a pass for making a mistake, but you can't make the same mistake twice. You have to learn from it. If you don't learn from it, then you've got to question yourself. And so sometimes I beat myself up about mistakes I make. And I've, I've got to give myself a pass sometimes because we all going to make mistakes. And when mistakes happen, we've got to question it. Why did that happen? And look into it. Don't gloss over the mistake. Think about it. What happened? I remember the, I'm, I'm thinking of one mistake right now um, that I made. And I'm in danger of making the same mistake. So when we opened Willoughby, it was a cash flow crisis because I didn't have a Scooby-Doo. I didn't have any projections or anything. I didn't have a clue. And and it was it was a really, really tough time. And now the reason why I'm in danger of making the same mistake again, it, we're in the process of changing over accountants. And I had cash flow forecasts coming out my eyeballs, everything. I knew everything about everything. Um, I knew what, what month we we was going dangerously low, what I consider dangerously low in cash. And when it was, and what the factors were around it, and but I knew that that was in a year's time, plenty of plenty, plenty of time. That was in the next shop fit, and I always underestimate everything. So it's worst case scenario basically for me is my cash flow forecast. However, because we've changed over our accountants, I haven't done a cash flow forecast for two months. I don't know where the hell I am, and so when I say I'm in danger of making the same mistake, I just feel a little bit like a fish out of water at a minute. I can't wait to get my accounts back on top of them, get the monthly accounts. I haven't had monthly accounts now for a couple of months as well. So I just don't, because it's a handover period. It's, it's really to get every, and obviously when you change your accountants, one account, my previous accountant is arguing my current accountant. My current accountant is arguing my previous accountant and they're both blaming each other because it's a bit of an ego thing. My new accountant wants to say, look, I'm better than them. Look at this. This is why, because this isn't this. And my old accountant's like, God, I just want to hand it all over. And, you know, you're asking me all these questions. Uh, anyway, so it's a bit complicated and it's a bit of a mess at the minute. So I feel like a little bit uneasy because I don't know where we are. My cash flows got money in the bank, but that's all Dean. Money, money in the bank equals happy Dean. No, that's not the case anymore. Money in the bank doesn't mean happy Dean because you don't know what's happening. You don't know. You don't know the cash flow predictions down the line. And so I need to know the cash flow predictions. Are we ahead of my predictions or are we behind them? And so that's something that we've got to get a handle on, hopefully before Christmas, so I can enjoy Christmas. Um, so everyone makes mistakes. That's why they put a rubbers on the end of pencils. Brilliant. Here's something. These next two are something I learned from Joey Barton. Joey Barton, the... Footballer. I was going to say aggressive footballer. I've watched some YouTube clips of him, and he's aggressive footballer. He's he's absolutely mad. Um, but I do love listening to him talk. He's got a book, and he's so articulate. He's very intelligent. I really, really look up to this man as a in certain aspects. Obviously, there's certain things that he's done wrong that he's he's made mistakes on. He's held his hands up. So, like I always say, you don't have to like everything about the man to like the man. And and to learn from a man as well. And I definitely, definitely like him. I, d I do like him. I do like him. Um, I love parts about him as well. Yeah, he's... Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, he said something which was really, really good. And I think it's so true. Smile at the world and watch what it does back. Smile and say hello when you're walking past people and watch them change. Watch their demeanor change. Watch their happiness change. If you smile at somebody inevitably they're going to smile back and that releases endorphins and all sorts of chemicals in the brain and makes people feel better. You have that power, my friends, to make people feel better. So smile at them. And I put here, changing the world one smile at a time. So you've got that power. Harness that power and smile at people. You are making that person happy for that split second. Why wouldn't you want to do that? 
and you don't know the knock-on effect that can have. So that's number two. Number three, I'm going to get to in a minute. I'm going to take my kid to school and then I'll be back. So number three, coming right up. All right, number three. Again, this is from Joey Barton. It was wonderful. The Hero and the Coward. I love this. The Hero and the Coward feel the exact same in the moment. They are both shitting themselves. But what determines who you are, if you're the hero or the coward, is what you do next. And so the problem is with with people like myself, um, when you get scared, when you get worried, you're thinking, fuck you now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm the coward kind of thing because I'm scared, I'm worried. But no, you've got to remember that everybody feels like that. Everybody feels like the coward. Even the hero feels like the coward because we all shit ourselves. We all worry. And so it's not what you do in that moment. It's what you do after the moment because the hero and the coward are the same in that very, very moment. What determines who you are next is your next step, how you handle that. I love that. And remember, by the way, leopards can change the, their spots. One time, you are going to be the coward. Another time, it doesn't mean you're the coward all the time. You're going to be the hero and vice versa. You are going to be the hero one time and you're going to be the coward another time. So give yourself a break. I love that. The hero and the coward. Um, here, number four, Alex Harmozy. Oh, every single week, it's Alex Harmozy, isn't it? You have nothing to lose from being underestimated. People... People don't like that they're under, underestimated. You should do. You have nothing to lose. You only get to be underestimated once. Listen to that. You only get to be underestimated once. And that's it. So take advantage. Use it. There is nothing to be gained from being overestimated. There is nothing to be gained from being overestimated. You want to be underestimated. That is fantastic. If you are underestimated, for example, I'm thinking of self-storage, if we come into town and Big Yellow see us, they're not going to be bothered. They're underestimators, and that gives us an advantage. If they overestimate us and think, oh, no, Dean's coming to town, what are we going to do? We're going to make sure our sales process is on point. They start looking into things, and then that means that it strengthens their position and weakens my position. So you want to be underestimated all the time. But you only get to be underestimated once. Use it. Take advantage of it. Right, number five now. This is really, really good. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Bullshit. Money does buy you happiness. And people, poor people say money doesn't buy you happiness to make themselves feel better. Boom! I told you you won't go like this. Uh, sorry if I've hurt your eardrums, by the way. Um, so money doesn't buy you happiness. There isn't a situation in the world where having money makes the situation worse. Listen to that again. There isn't a situation in the world where having more money makes that situation worse. You name me one. Money can only be a positive. It can never be a negative. It isn't a negative. But poor people say money can't buy you happiness. I love that. I, I, can't, I think I got that from Alex Harmozy. And there is a caveat, obviously, that I don't think money makes you happy internally. But what it's really saying here, obviously the headline is money does buy you happiness. But the headline, the headline um, doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. The whole story is that basically there's not a situation in the world where having more money doesn't make that situation worse. And I'm not saying that if you've got money, you're straight away internally happy of course not it doesn't work like that but it certainly helps in any situation whether you've got an illness having more money is an advantage whether you're in between jobs having more money certainly makes that better it doesn't nothing make no situation becomes worse for having more money so remember that and so there's nothing wrong with wanting more money there's nothing wrong with making money because it's almost your responsibility I think it's my responsibility to make as much money as possible to make sure that I provide the best lifestyle for my kids and for, for me and for my family around. I want to treat people. I want to take people on holiday. I want to treat people. And the question is, when do you sell out? Well, 
it's almost like when's enough money enough money? Do we sell it for 10 million? Do we sell it for 20 million? Do we sell it for 100 million? What What is the point? When's enough enough? Uh, but it's a good thing is it's a question that I don't have to answer right now because I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Certainly for the next, until I'm 50, the question won't even arise. So I'm hoping to, by the time I'm 50, God knows how many sites we'll have. Uh, but my, my goal is in 2024 is to have 10 sites. 10 sites by the end of 2024. And so then I'll be 43. So by 50, will it be 30? Will it be 40? Will it be, how many sites will I have? Oh, it's exciting. Anyway, the headline, money doesn't buy you happiness is bullshit. Money, there isn't a situation in the world where having more money makes the situation worse. Brilliant. I love it. All right, my friends, I love you. I appreciate you. And I will be seeing you on Monday morning for Hacking Self Stories listeners, for Motivated Entrepreneurs. It'll be this time next week. All right. Love you. Appreciate you. Bye.